distinguished guests here in Singapore and all over the world, I am Zhu Ho Lee, uh, Chairperson of Education Commission Asia and Commissioner of Education Commission and former Minister of Education, Science and Technology. I am delighted to speak to you today to present High Touch High Tech for All. First, it is my pleasure to introduce an amazing young woman who represents a powerful voice of future generations. I am Kalula Del Prado, an eighth grade student from the Philippines. I'm honored to represent millions of children like me to speak to all of you today. Thanks to scholarships, I've attended good private schools for most of my years in school. All nine long years so far. <laughs> And today, I want to share with you why education is important to me. I recently discovered that in low-income countries, 90% of children are in learning poverty, meaning they cannot read a simple text at age 10. As a young woman who aspires to be an author, actress, and or singer-songwriter, my life has always revolved around reading and writing. Nothing can replace the experience of delving into a new universe, so finding out about the millions of children who are unable to read truly saddened me. When the pandemic started, online school came like whiplash. It made my eyesight worse, lessened my motivation, and hurt my mental health. The academic pressure weighed more than ever, and I missed the human side of the student-teacher connection. I remember my history teacher in fourth grade having us line up and play games to enhance our learnings, and he made school so much more fun than it ever was. Virtual schooling made me think about how technology has come so far, but the COVID response was an abrupt one. This made me wonder, how much more can technology improve while the human connection continues to suffer? What would a purposeful, thoughtfully designed online schooling look like? How can we connect technology's potential with the essential human touch that teachers provide to unlock education for all? Education has to be accessible to all eager to learn. As someone who's had the opportunity to learn English as a second language, I've been able to help my family. Along with this, as a young member of society, I've learned that education is power. Education fuels the capabilities of these hands and this mind that you'll be leaving your future to. The future of this world is up to the youth, yes, but it's up to the adults to show us the way. As Mahatma Gandhi said, we must be the change we wish to see in the world, so change we all must. The youth of the world are ready for change, and we call on the adults all of you, to help us change it for the better. Thank you. As chair of the Education Commission, I'm delighted to join you virtually at the Philanthropy Asia Summit, this great event, and to discuss with you how we can radically transform education together. In 2020, economies came to a standstill, but in education, progress has not just stalled, but sadly gone into reverse. The term lost generation is widely used when displaced young people bear the brunt as refugees of civil wars and conflict, as is the case in Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, Somalia, Ethiopia, and now Afghanistan. But today, the term lost generation has a worldwide resonance. As a total of 1.6 billion children in 188 countries who were deprived of months of schooling during COVID-19 struggle to catch up. Before COVID, 258 million school-aged children were not enjoying any education. Now the figure is closer to 300 million. Millions sadly have abandoned education with 10 million more child brides, 9 million more underage laborers, and millions more rootless youth now on the streets rather than in classrooms. Before COVID, more than half of the developing world's 10-year-olds could not read or understand a simple text. Now it's more than 60%. And that's more than 450 million children. They are in learning poverty and they cannot read a sim sim simple text by age 10. In low-income countries, that figure is a staggering 90%. As a result of the deterioration today's young people stand to lose as much as 16 trillion in future earnings. 
education has been a victim of this crisis. But at the same time, education is also the solution. Education is the most powerful driver for a healthy people and a healthy planet. No economic health or climate recovery can even be complete or ever be sustained without a recovery in education. But education budgets have sadly been tightened. At a time when we need to do more, education has been given less. There have been cuts in government expenditure in individual countries and cuts too in international aid. But if building back better is to happen quickly or at all, we need to do more and we need to think outside the box. We need to pursue innovative ideas that can have maximum impact. That is why the Education Commission and its hub in Asia, under the visionary leadership of Commissioner Zhou Ho Li, are spearheading what we call the High Touch, High Tech for All initiative. This initiative grows out of the recommendations in my Commission's flagship Learning Generation Report, because evidence shows that personalized learning report, approaches, such as teaching at the right level, improve learning results. Personalized learning works, but it has never been achieved at scale. It has been only for the lucky few. And there is promising evidence that shows now that tech-supported personalized learning can significantly improve learning outcomes at scale, especially for those left furthest behind. High touch, high tech combines the power of human touch. That's the benefits of teacher as tutor with the power of adaptive technology. We recently launched the high tech, high touch for all global consortium to design, test and scale high touch, high tech approaches across the world. I call on partners at the Philanthropy Asia Summit to join this global consortium that can bring about great change. And this initiative could offer young people hope where today it has been fading fast. Hope dies, you know, when a young person cannot plan or prepare for the future, is unable to even dream of a better life. But hope can come alive when young people can bridge the gap between who they are and what they have it in themselves to become. We must reverse the course of this global education crisis. We must invest in proven scalable solutions that can truly deliver inclusive and equitable quality education for the world's children. Our fair shared future depends on this. Let us come together to meet this moment. Let's make sure our precious children and our young people do not become a lost generation, but they become a learning generation. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon and Carola. Uh, when I became Minister of Education, Science and Technology in my late 40s, I think I was quite welcomed by the people in South Korea. While I was not as inspiring or popular as BTS, <laughs> People were waiting for a change. Korea's prioritization of education has served as the key driver for its rapid and equitable growth since the 1960s. But entering into 2000s, that was no longer the case. In 2011, when serving as a minister, I remember President Obama praising Korea's education system and feeling a, a bit uncomfortable. As I was in the middle of trying to make fundamental changes to what I thought was an education system that badly needed reform. A new learning model was overdue then. It is long overdue now. And we really cannot wait any longer. The High Touch High Tech for All initiative has truly been a long time coming. There are two engines driving educational change and impact. The high touch provided by teachers and the high tech provided by technology. Through my time as a minister and my more recent work with Education Commission, I came to realize that we have an opportunity to deliver quality, personalized education at scale when you combine teachers with new technology. High Touch High Tech enables us to move away from every student receiving the same lesson at the same time to each student having their own personalized learning experience at the right time. With the AI-assisted adaptive learning te technology, 
tailoring instruction to individual student levels and needs, teachers are able to provide personalized guidance and more active learning experience to nurture students' 21st century skills, such as creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. While the evidence is still accruing for high-touch high tech, the initial results were impressive. Our first prototype project in Vietnam demonstrated learning gains of 0.436 standard deviation, equivalent to two years of learning in just one semester, and with greater impacts seen for lower performing students. Teachers also reported significant improvement in their personalized teaching practices. In Korea, we have already seen over 1,200 K-12 students and 1,800 college students benefit from this approach through the National High Touch High Tech Consortium that Education Commission Asia launched last year. Within just a year and a half, the consortium has grown to include five local governments, 28 universities, numerous other educational institutions, and many edtech companies. Survey results for a high-touch high-tech project involving more than 200 students in the Socho district of Seoul show that program participation improved learning attitudes and confidence in understanding course content, solving complex problems, and enhancing future learning prospects. One teacher at a school for North Korean refugees had numerous learning approaches with no success until she was introduced to high touch high tech. And I still remember what she said to me. If it can work here, it can work anywhere. She is now one of the most active leaders in the high touch high tech consortium. Through the collaboration of the diverse leaders, innovators comprising this consortium, I have seen many glimmers of hope into the potential of high touch high tech and its scalability. After searching for a new learning model for over 30 years, I'm confident that I have found it in the high touch high tech approach, not only for Korea, but globally. The opportunity to transform education is now, so let us unite in vision and mission so that we can truly deliver high touch high tech for all. Now let's turn our attention to the screen to hear from the voices of those who experienced the high touch high tech firsthand. <laughs> In, in the past, they, these students, even though they have the potential, they actually failed. But now, with this suitable guidance and suitable adaptive uh, guidance, they can actually now f succeed. Yeah. We are uh, in this uh, exciting time, exciting stage, and I think education, the ho uh, whole new uh, you know, innovative approaches in education now are ahead of us. So uh, I'm yeah. very excited. <laughs> 자신이 취약한 부분을 개별 학습할 수 있다는 것이 가장 큰 메리트고 앞으로도 이러한 AI가 학생들의 교육 격차를 해소하는데 붙여져서 이해가 잘 됐습니다. 그리고 문제집과 달리 영상 게임 같이 다양한 방법으로 공부할 수 있다는 것이 좋습니다. 저는 집에서 혼자 문제집으로 공부를 하면 집중이 잘안 되는데 센터에서 센터에 나와서 친구들과 함께 기회를 사용해서 공부하니 saca un poco la presión de la corrección ya porque los niños saben si hacen un ejercicio si está bien o está mal entonces no necesitan del maestro directamente en ese mismo instante para que le esté corrigiendo sino que el maestro puede dedicar a trabajar con otros alumnos que estén en otra parte o hayan presentado otra dificultad o necesiten mayor apoyo Over the last two years we have been working on the High Tech High Touch Project together with Education Commission Asia we strongly believe this is a very powerful methodology and approach for teachers to apply in the classroom.
When I first used Alex, it left a great impression on me. The concept of studying using devices has been around for a while, but Alex made that concept interesting. Alex incorporates high tech and high touch learning, which is very innovative. Because we are in the fourth industrial revolution, this change from normal textbooks to online work was definitely needed. As a student who experienced high tech, high touch, I would recommend using Alex as a solution to enhance our experience in learning to enrich our mathematics knowledge in a really smart way. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to be involved and share the experience I've had. I'm pleased to share that our school has been applying Alex even when the pilot was ended. Thanks to this project, I've grown so much as a teacher and I have had a lot of joy along the journey. I hope High Tech High Tech will reach as many students and teachers from all over the world as possible. Now that we've heard the promise of High Touch High Tech, I wanted to share with you our call to action. With your support, we would like to do three things. One, spearhead the High Touch High Tech for All global consortium that Gordon mentioned to create a globally connected community that designs, tests, and scales High Touch High Tech around the world. Two, we will design, pilot, and evaluate High Touch High Tech in Cambodia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And three, we will conduct a rapid feasibility study in Ghana to seed high-touch, high-tech in Africa. Given the success of bringing multi-sectoral partners together in Korea, as Juho mentioned, the global consortium was launched. The aim of this is to really catalyze the global ecosystem, addressing key bottlenecks and accelerating the scale-up of high-touch, high-tech worldwide. We will do this through three things. Analyze. We have a strong focus on research, data, and analysis, and will share evidence and lessons on what does and what doesn't work. Act. We will collaborate with governments and country partners to design, pilot, and evaluate, and more importantly, create those ecosystems that will enable it to scale. And amplify. We will facilitate global learning and action broker cross-sectoral partnerships, and catalyzing financing for scale. We plan to work with organizations such as UNICEF to build on their innovative digital learning work with Reimagine Education. We are delighted to have established really strong partnerships with governments and local partners in four countries. While Cambodia has made progress in access, more needs to be done. Only 10% of children aged 15 achieve minimum proficiency in maths. With partners such as Teach for Cambodia and the Ministry, we aim to improve learning outcomes in maths and 21st century skills for 10,000 lower secondary school students through working with 300 teachers and school leaders to harness high-tech adaptive learning with high-touch innovative pedagogical approaches. With high interest from the Indonesian Ministry to modernize teacher training institutes, we will work with the Tonoto Foundation to pilot High Touch High Tech for pre-service teacher education. We will work with their network of teacher training institutes to test this new adaptive and experiential approach to training teachers in order to improve literacy outcomes in partner schools. And in the Philippines, a 2019 international assessment showed underperformance in maths. With support from the Department of Education, we will work with the Ayala Foundation to pilot high touch, high tech to improve learning outcomes in maths with the goal of reaching 10,000 primary school students and 300 teachers and school leaders in some of the most marginalized last mile areas of the archipelago. And finally, high-touch, high-tech for Africa really is a new frontier. 
we're excited to work with Ghana's Ministry of Education to conduct a feasibility study to develop the best fit approach for this context. So over the next three years, with your support, we will design, implement and evaluate three country pilots in Asia, one feasibility study in Africa and drive the global consortium to ensure global learning, actions and partnerships for sustainability. With your support, we will reach at least 20,000 children with improved maths, literacy and 21st century skills. We will equip 1,200 teachers and school leaders with personalised and active teaching approaches and catalyse three country ecosystems for scale. And finally, we will create global, global public goods and partnerships that can contribute to a digital learning expansion around the world. We look forward to working with you to pioneer this personalised approach to education for all. And just a final thought, so many areas of our life are personalised, from the way we shop, to the music we listen to, to the TV we watch. Why not personalise the one thing we value for our children? Why not for education? Now we are delighted to hear from Fernando Amzoba de Ayala, the CEO, President and Co-Chairman of the Ayala Foundation, one of our partners, and then we will hear the voices of some of the people in some of the countries we plan to work in. Thank you for this opportunity to speak about the education challenges in this region, as well as the unique opportunity that we currently have to make a difference in the lives of so many young children through the power of technology and personalized learning. Within Asia and the Pacific is an estimated 1.1 billion under the age of 30, or around 60% of the world's youth, who will become the workforce of emerging economies and the industries of the future. This potential, however, is hampered by the challenge of learning poverty, which Mr. Gordon Brown correctly described as a challenge that must be immediately addressed. At the Ayala Foundation, as well as in the for-profit sector, we have been participating in the educational sector in the Philippines in a significant way. This is a key pillar of our social impact efforts. We're faced with a critical problem in the Philippines, with as much as 60 to 70 percent of children being unable to read basic text by the age of 10. Technology holds tremendous power to be the great equalizer of educational opportunities by providing the facilities, equipment and knowledge required by an increasingly digital world. The High Touch, High Tech for All initiative will certainly help in a very significant way, transforming the role of the teacher to meet the learning demands of the 21st century and empowering students to gain the relevant behavioral and technical skills needed to succeed in the new global economy. The Ayala Foundation is privileged to take part in this initiative. We believe that this is a unique moment to make this happen. While we recognize the challenges and pain caused by the pandemic, it also resulted in an exponential surge in online education, e-commerce and new digital services. We are encouraged that recent research by the World Economic Forum showed that 70% of students in Southeast Asia believe that online education will persist well beyond the pandemic. It is our firm conviction that the time to make an indelible impact to the education challenge is now. Individuals and organizations are called to be meaningful partners in this movement for change. With technology's vast potential, we believe that high touch, high tech for all is an excellent path towards the progressive world that we are collectively building. We hope that we can work together in this journey. Thank you very much. Learning from the coronavirus pandemic, we see how technology plays an important role in learning and teaching. We don't really want technology to totally replace teacher, but we want both teacher and technology have student learning. So I strongly support the high touch high touch project in Cambodia. 
ពីគោលឡងបោកសាលាតូតូយូទីទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទ
So it is very important uh, to provide an ecosystem that, so that they can work together, closely work together, and develop new advanced uh, uh, technologies uh, and, uh, in, in education and, and, and find a way to apply those uh, technologies in the classroom. And just to add about adapting to um, different contexts, we're very driven by the, um, the adaptive software available in the country, by the digital connectivity, by the capacity of teachers. Um, and so we do adapt it. It's, it's an approach that we really believe can be contextualized to the needs of each country. Um, time is up. Thank you very much. <laughs>